And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everybody, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to check out a smaller box game from a small company in Singapore, I believe, called Red Tin Bot. Uh, this game is called Otantin. Uh, now, it's a dice-based game, uh, which is going to have a push-your-luck element, then followed by what they call a strategy and war phase. Uh, but before I just get too much into that, why don't we just look and see what comes inside of the box. I'll give you a brief overview of how the game plays, and then we'll come back here at the end, and we'll get my opinions on Otantin. So here you can see the setup for Otantin. Now, in addition to what you see here, we have a bag that has dice in it. These dice uh, are, of course, many-sided. They're six-sided dice, and on each of these dice, there are different symbols. Uh, you'll see that there's a cocoa bean. The cocoa bean is the point of this game. You're trying to collect as many cocoa beans as possible uh, to get to a certain number before everybody else. And you can set what that number is for longer or shorter games, 10 being the shortest game, and you can move up from there. At the end of your turn, if you have cocoa beans showing, you'll get the cocoa beans. There's multiple cocoa beans on some dice. Other dice will have different values, but they're going to have the same symbols. Uh, you'll also see that on this dice there is a warrior. You're going to collect warriors in order to try and attack other players and steal their cocoa beans. That's right, we're fighting over cocoa beans. So you're going to collect warriors and use them to either attack other people to steal theirs, or defend to, of course, keep your own cocoa beans. In addition, we have skulls. Skulls are bad. Uh, skulls are very, very bad. When you roll a skull, not only are you going to lose some of your warriors to the people to your left and right, if they have fewer than you, you're also one quarter of the way towards ending your turn and getting nothing. If you roll four skulls, your turn ends automatically, and you, of course, you get nothing. And then finally, we have temples. Temples are re-rolls. If you get temples and you've rolled all 15 dice that are in that bag, uh, you can put the temples back in and roll more dice, hopefully to get more symbols. So they're kind of a, uh, you rolled it, you didn't get anything, but you can push your luck a little bit more later and roll it again. On your turn, you are going to take this bag of dice and you're going to pull three dice out at a time. So you'll pull three dice out and you'll roll them. And you'll see what you get. So I got a cocoa bean, a warrior, and a temple. These are good, and I will set this aside, and then I can choose either to pull three more dice and roll three more, or to do nothing and basically end my turn. I would get a warrior and a cocoa bean. And that's essentially it. So I'm going to push my luck, and I'll roll. I get a skull. Now, if I had any warriors, let's say I had some warriors on my defense card here, my opponents could each steal one as long as they had fewer than me because I rolled this skull. That's basically all it's going to do right now, but they could each take one and assign it wherever they wanted to, either to attack or defense, because they had less than me. In addition, you'll see I rolled another cocoa bean and another one of these temples. And then I could pull three more dice and continue on. So I'd roll again. And I rolled two more skulls and a warrior. So now I have two warriors, two cocoa beans, two temples, and three skulls. If I were to roll another skull, I would lose my entire turn. I'd get no cocoa beans and no warriors. Uh, but nobody's getting to steal any more warriors because they each have at least as many as I do if I had started the turn with three. On your first turn, you'll start with none. So skulls will just end your turn if you roll four of them prematurely. But later, you will lose warriors if you have more than your opponents. So I could theoretically go again and roll more dice, and now I'm really likely to roll my last skull. And I did. I actually rolled two more skulls, ending my turn, and I would get nothing. But had I not rolled skulls, I would keep going until I decided to stop pressing my luck. Or until I've rolled all of the dice, and then I can take these temples, put them back in the bag, and continue rolling. But if I decided to end my turn here, I would get four warriors and two of these cocoa beans. Now when I take my warriors, I can assign them either to my attack card or my defense card. Uh, now, if you have a lot of cocoa beans, you're probably going to want to defend them. But if you don't have as many, and somebody to your left or right has more, you're probably going to want to attack them to steal them from them. So we'll say I'm the first player. I'm going to take my four and put them there. And I'm also going to take my two cocoa beans. So now I'm ready to defend my cocoa beans from the next player. After this, the next player is going to start their turn and do the same thing. They're going to roll dice until they decide either to stop or they push their luck so far that they can't take anything, and they end their turn by rolling four skulls. After everyone has finished rolling, you'll go all the way around the table rolling, and there could be a lot of players, so it could take quite some time to roll the dice and wait for everybody to roll their dice. You're going to move on to what's called the strategy phase. Now, I've already showed you, you have attacking warriors and defending warriors, as well as your cocoa bean supply. Right now, I have four defending, and who knows what my other opponents would have at this point, but maybe some of them chose to attack and some of them chose to defend. Uh, let's say most of them chose to defend, whatever the case is. Each player has four cards in their hand. You'll see there's an attack card, there's a defense card, and then there are two handshake cards, which are basically truce cards, but can be used to kind of make a deal between you and somebody else to attack through to someone else. What you're going to do is you're going to strategize on how you want to attack or defend to your left and right. So maybe 
you know, this person over here has a bunch of cocoa beans, they got three, and you've decided you would like to attack them. You have no attacking warriors, so you're not going to do this, but if you had warriors to attack with, you could attack to the left, maybe, and decide to steal from them. But you're going to defend there. Um, you're going to have to hope, apparently, that the person to your right is not going to attack you and that you can play a truce. So you'd play these face down and everyone would choose their cards face down. Note, you don't have two defense cards, so you can't defend to both sides. You also can't attack to both sides. Once everyone has chosen their cards, and let's say this person is nice and decides to offer a truce, and they're going to defend over here because they have some cocoa beans, uh, and the player next to me here uh, is going to, of course, choose some cards as well. They're very neutral, and they decide to truce on both sides. Uh, and the last player is going to, of course, uh, attack on one side and defend on the other. So maybe they'll attack over here, and they will defend over here. So what happens at this point is everyone will reveal their cards at the same time. So we've all showing off what we've chosen, and we're going to resolve these with whoever has the largest army starting first, basically. Uh, so you're going to go with the largest attacking force first. You're going to look and see who's attacking. So our first attack is actually the only attack, and it's right here. And he is attacking with two warriors on the player here who has four defending warriors. Now when you're attacking, each one of your attacking warriors, as long as you chose attack, is worth two. So this would be two, four. Each one of your defending warriors, if you chose defend, is worth four. So we have four, eight, twelve, sixteen defense. Four attackers, or two attackers I should say, for a total of four strength, kill one of the defenders and basically nothing's going to happen here. They attack, they lost their army, the defenders held up strong and they get to keep their cocoa beans. Yay! Now, over here we have a truce. This is going to be nothing. Or it could say that this player is going to help this player defend against this player had they attacked the one closest to me. So these two could combine up and defend against the yellow player who maybe was attacking over here. That's not the case. We have a defense against nothing, so these two neutral out or nullify each other. We have a defense against a, a neutral card, so that's going to do nothing. Uh, and these two players agreed to do nothing. So. Essentially, we have the one attack in that case, but you could have attacks against defenses. You could have two players attacking each other to steal the cocoa beans, uh, and they could actually steal back and forth. So I could theoretically attack someone, steal those cocoa beans from them, and then someone could attack me with a smaller army. I don't have enough defense to stop them, and they take all of the cocoa beans that I had, plus the ones that I stole from somebody else. So essentially, you're going to have this kind of what is everybody else going to play mentality. I have to figure out, do I want to be strong on defense or strong on offense? I have to figure out, you know, who's got the cocoa beans? Do I have the cocoa beans? Am I, need to defend, am, am I needing to defend them or am I needing to steal more in order to end the game quickly? But what you can have is a scenario where one person amasses a bunch of cocoa beans, gets close to the end, another person manages to roll a lot of warriors, attack and steal them all. But in any case, whoever best manages to get these dice rolls to get them the warriors and the cocoa beans, amass those cocoa beans and then defend them and steal cocoa beans from the other players will be the winner. Oh boy, so um, this game is, is terrible. It's terrible. Um, and I hate, I do hate bashing games from small companies. I always feel bad that, you know, they, they go to all this work and they're trying to struggle to make these games and they just want to get exposure, but people need to know this game is not good. Um, the first thing I did is I opened it up and I saw a bunch of dice. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm not a huge dice fan, but I can understand uh, that there are dice games out there that are great, especially if they use dice in a unique manner. Uh, something like Twa or Madeira or uh, even Seasons where they have the cool dice that you're drafting. Great. I'm okay with that. But this game is just simply a push-your-luck game. game. If you played zombie dice or Martian dice or anything like that, you're pulling dice out and you're rolling them. But where this game goes even further wrong for me is that the punishment aspect of it. So I understand that push-your-luck, of course, has to have a punishing aspect to it. If you push your luck too far, you lose what you've done, and that's great. Uh, and this game has that. It has the fact that if you roll four skulls, your turn ends, and, well, apparently you push too hard. Uh, now, I have what seems to be terrible luck with dice anyway, and I, I know that, of course, is just my perspective of remembering how the dice went, and there's always good rolls and bad rolls, and it even it averages out, but, but the fact that when you roll a bad die in this game, you roll a skull, for example, uh, not only do you get punished at the end if you roll four skulls, but you get punished along the way, too. I mean, like, you're losing your warriors. You're, you're trying to accumulate these warriors, and you need to have them to protect yourself, but if you, if you roll poorly, you lose them to the players to your left and right, and they get more attack against you. Um, double punishment is a terrible, terrible idea. Just never, ever punish me twice for the same thing in a game. I, I, 
I don't, it just doesn't seem to make any sense. I roll a die, it's random anyway, and then I roll poorly and I get punished twice for rolling a skull. Great. Uh, now that, on top of that, there's the whole, we're vying for cocoa beans. I don't understand why we're fighting over cocoa beans. Just grow some more cocoa beans. But the theme aside, um, it seems like there's a strategy or a dominant strategy and just waiting for somebody to accumulate a bunch of cocoa beans uh, and steal them all from them and who cares if I get my own cocoa beans and even more so if you can plan a strategy where someone attacks someone steals their cocoa beans utilizes some of their resources and then you just hit them after that you can take their cocoa beans and so you've got more cocoa beans accumulating in one spot that are now easier to take um, there seems to be a flaw there the rules are terribly written just terribly written and you can't understand them. Um, I went online and actually read uh, a walkthrough of the game in order to figure out how I was supposed to play, especially with the, the handshake cards, which you're supposed to play next to other people in order to kind of have a truce with them, but you can also use to travel through that person and attack another person beyond them. Uh, and then there's a whole rule about breaking the handshakes and having them not work. Uh, and then there, there's what happens if I attack another player who's attacking me, and what happens if they're not defending? How many points are their defending warriors worth? Are their attacking warriors worth anything? You just don't know from reading the rule book. So all around the game was kind of a fail for me. The dice, the, the terribly written rules, the whole not understanding of the cards left and right, the fact that I can't attack or defend against two players, it all just kind of came together in a really flat game for me. And this is one that I can't suggest to anybody it's certainly not going to stay in my collection. Uh, I wish it was gone already, actually, so uh, it'll be going very soon. Anyhow, that is Otanton. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.